Um, well, it's the fifth annual Pride Games. Um, and the whole point of Pride Games is kind of the, one of the biggest parts of our group, which is to really try to bridge the gap between the LGBT and the athletic communities here at Penn. And so we literally have done that by having, we have teams from representing both of those communities um, competing alongside one another. So it, it really creates like this solidarity amongst the two communities. And it started in 2008, I was um, a sophomore and I started getting involved with this group called PATH, which is Penn Athletes and Allies Tackling Homophobia. I had this idea, I had this image in my head of a rainbow of teams coming together and, and just this picture of everyone having field day, having fun, it's sort of being equal. Um, and I was um, the captain of the track team uh, when I was at Penn and I was also the chair of the Queer Student Alliance. So um, I really wanted those two groups to, to come together. Um, it brings together the athletic community and the LGBT community for a day of events and also to raise awareness about homophobia, not only within the athletic community, but within um, the greater Penn community at large. I was um, dealing with some of my, my coaching colleagues who have been essentially intimidated into silence within their communities. So um, it was one of those things where after a while just hearing the same stories over and over, you know, you can't help but not feel that urge to, to help the situation. So um, although our, our primary, primary focus is to really kind of get into the campus environments and help the student athletes, it's also equally as important to help the coaches and administrators. One, year, one night last year I was walking home um, from the party with my boyfriend and we were just walking and we passed the house of a certain sports team and one of them called us faggots and it turned erupt in this whole thing and the police were called and we ended up reporting it to like the university and it turned into this whole huge thing. Uh, well, specifically, like I said, within athletics, although Penn has like a very uh, LGBT friendly cli climate for the most part, within the athletic community, there still needs to be some issues addressed, such as um, within certain teams, they, uh, uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender athletes have felt uh, discriminated against in certain uh, areas, so we're still trying to reach all the pockets of Penn um, when it comes to becoming LGBT friendly. So I had, you know, when I was looking at Penn, um, I was, I came out in high school um, when I, I was on the track team, but I didn't come out completely to my, my track team. And um, when I was being recruited for schools, I knew that I wanted to go to a place that would be inclusive. I knew I wanted to be on a team where I could be out, um, identify as bisexual, and I wanted to feel comfortable on my team. So I chose Penn because when I met the girls on the trip, I really felt like this was a group that if I did come out, that they would accept me. And um, my instincts proved to be right, and um, I had a very positive experience. Um, well, I've had it pretty well on my team. I'm, I'm a tennis player here at Penn, and I came out my s freshman year, second semester. So I was, I was out like in the LGBT community at Penn my first semester, so that kind of represents kind of I was myself in one, in one aspect of my life in the LGBT community, but not really in, um, but not really in the athletic community. And I, once I finally decided to just come out all together, my, my team really, I couldn't have asked for anything better. I think at the beginning everyone was a bit kind of hesitant to talk about it, but once like my captain actually, he was a senior, he started kind of joking about it and everyone saw that it was really not off limits, it's become like, it's almost like I'm kind of like an educational tool. Well, honestly, I think we need some straight allies to really start speaking up. Um, is one of the things that was mentioned in the discussion earlier was that the straight allies aren't questioned for their agenda. So once the straight ally can start standing up, then you get other straight allies who will kind of follow that lead and, and support the community. I think that you know there's there's new organizations starting to tackle homophobia and bullying in sports, but I think you know, younger generations are, are impatient and they want change now. So I think it's sort of coming from the bottom up um, because we don't have, if you, if you think of any professional sports role models, we, we don't necessarily have role models yet to, to look to. So uh, I think a lot of the movement is sort of coming from younger generations and allies standing up. It's really about the straight athletes to create that environment so that someone who is closeted and not really sure whether they can come out in this part of their life really knows 
and like has messages coming from them from their teammates that it's okay if they do come out. And so, yeah. Break the Silence was created to advance gay, lesbian, bi, and trans inclusion in intercollegiate athletics. Um, and we try to do that through archives, which is our online collection of stories and campus integration initiatives. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends.